Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are going through Q3 delivery and production number forecasts, as well as a little bit of a preview for Q4 as well. As a reminder, we should get the official report from Tesla sometime within the next three business days, so I do expect it tomorrow, Friday, either before market open or after market close, but it could come as late as end of day on Monday or even over the weekend. If you are normally an audio podcast only listener, I would recommend checking this out on YouTube because I am going to go through my spreadsheet. That link will be in the show notes, so with that being said, let's get right into it. So here you can see my production forecast, kind of breaking things up by segment, usually month, and then summing them up for the quarter. And in some cases, the months are broken up if there is known downtime for a portion of that month. So unlike other forecasts that you're going to see, this is a production forecast for me. A lot of people do delivery estimates. We'll go through delivery estimates, but for me, production is more important. And then I take that production forecast and work into my delivery estimate. So we'll go through all the logic here point by point, but just to orient people again with the spreadsheet, or for the first time if you're not familiar, I have the total production forecasts, or actuals, on the leftmost column. Then I have Fremont and Shanghai broken out individually, so the sum of those should equal the total. And then the sort of center section here, I have calendar weeks, and then weekly production rates, and then the right-hand section I have calendar days and daily production rates. The gray cells are actuals, so those are known quantities. The blue cells are things that we have extremely high confidence in based on some other information. And then the orange cells are pretty high confidence, but not fully certain. Generally, those are the monthly production numbers that are reported from Shanghai, which in some cases can then be backed out of the total officially reported by Tesla to get an estimate for Fremont production. So I hope that makes sense. I'm just gonna show everything right off the bat here and then we'll go through all the logic, but I also don't wanna bury the lead. So my Q3 production forecast for Tesla is right now 144,600 vehicles. That would represent a 76% increase over Q2's production of 82,300 vehicles and a 50% increase over last year's Q3 of 96,155. So let's talk about how I'm getting to that number. First, we'll start with Shanghai because again, we have those monthly production reports that have seemed to be pretty accurate for us in the past. So D. Couric on Twitter, Moneyball, has been helpful in posting these each month. It looks like July production from Shanghai was 12,500 vehicles, and then August pretty similar, 12,700. We don't yet obviously have reports for September production, but we do know that Tesla's Gigafactory Shanghai was shut down from September 20th to September 30th, thanks to Wuwa on YouTube and Ray for Tesla on Twitter. So because of that, I am estimating September's total production to be about 7,900 vehicles. That's a weekly production rate excluding that shutdown of 2,900 vehicles per week, which is very similar to what Tesla produced in July and August. After steady growth so far this year, that production rate did seem to level off. So it does seem like Tesla is at that capacity. That's about 150,000 per year. And then we heard a report from Tesmanian yesterday that after this shutdown, Tesla will be adding a third shift So we could see a production boost after that to more of that 200,000 per year type of level that Tesla says they have the installed capacity for. I think that also makes sense with the introduction that we had today or yesterday, depending on her time zone, of the new lower priced lithium iron phosphate cathode Model 3. So anyway, for Q3, that gets me to a production forecast for Shanghai of 33,150 vehicles. So now we can flip over to Fremont and I want to start with the Model Y. So here, I think the best information for us to look at is vehicle identification numbers or VINs. Troy Teslik has a great Google sheet that allows people to input their Model Y order information. And from that, we can sort of see the distribution of VINs by month. So at the end of Q2, the highest Model Y VIN was around 25,000. So that provides a ceiling for us. We know that if the highest VIN that has been delivered is 25,000, then production can't exceed that level. However, it also doesn't mean that 25,000 vehicles have been produced. For example, in June, we also saw a vehicle that was delivered with a VIN range of 2,000. So in general, I think somewhere in that midpoint probably ends up being pretty close to the actual production number. For Q2, for example, I had estimated that around 11,000 Model Ys had been produced. So if we look at Q3, if we look through the end of September, the highest VINs that have been reported are now in the 59,000 range. So if we just use the spread between the previously highest reported VIN and the new highest reported VIN, 25,000 to 59,000, that's a spread of 34,000 vehicles. And most of these VINs in September have been above 44,000. So just like in June, most were above 11,000. If we think about some of the VINs that have been skipped or are missing, then to me, cumulative production of around that 44,000 level feels pretty good, which would put Q3 production for Model Y 
at about 33,000 vehicles if Q2 was around 11,000. So not a high confidence estimate, but for Q3, forecasting 33,000 Model Ys produced. Let's then shift over to SNX because I think that's pretty simple. Historically, over the last five or six quarters or so, excluding Q2 when there was so much downtime, we have seen production for Model S and X in Fremont range anywhere from around 14,000 all the way up to about 18,000. So really I'm taking the midpoint of that and estimating that Tesla produced around 16,000 S and X in Q3, but they do actually have more capacity than that. We just haven't seen it for the last few quarters, but there could be a couple thousand vehicle upside there. So assuming 16,000 S and X, we then come to Model 3. This is probably the area with the highest variability or the most unknown to me because historically we have seen Tesla produce up to about 6,500 Model 3s out of Fremont per week. However, even factoring in the shutdowns in Q1 and Q2, that production rate for Model Y dropped to around 5,800 vehicles per week in Q1 and around just 4,400 vehicles per week in Q2. Again, excluding shutdowns. So Tesla either throttled back Model 3 production or they simply shifted some of those resources for Model 3 production over to Model Y, which I think is probably more likely. So one of the biggest questions around Q3 production is what this Model 3 production rate ends up being. For Q2, if we had assumed that there were 11,000 Model Ys produced, then a weekly production rate for Model 3 would have been somewhere around 4,400. So for Q3, what I'm sort of assuming here is that Tesla will start to accelerate that production again. Again, Q2 was a very tricky quarter with restarting after the coronavirus shutdowns. So production in Q3 should be more efficient not having to deal with that situation. I looked back and historically Tesla, when they were ramping up Model 3, increased the production rate by around 8% each quarter. So I'm sort of using that as a benchmark for what they might be able to improve the production rate as this quarter. So I'm bumping that production rate from Q2 up by about 8% here to about 4,750 vehicles per week for Model 3 Fremont. That gets me to about 62,000 for the quarter. We add that to the 33,000 Model Ys and the 16,000 Model S and X. And that gets me to a Fremont production forecast of 111,500 vehicles for Q3. If we add that to the Shanghai forecast of 33,200, then that gets me to my total of 144,600. I think the biggest risk to this forecast is upside for Model 3 production. Again, there have been times in Tesla's history where they've produced you know, a couple thousand more per week than what I'm forecasting here for the Model 3. So the question is, okay, was Model Y the impact causing that production rate to come down in Q1 and Q2, or was it more COVID related? I'm kind of forecasting somewhere in the middle, assuming there was impacts from both. And then I would say the biggest risk to the downside would be Model Y production, if that's possibly being overestimated just from this VIN counting type of situation, which is relatively low confidence. So let's visualize this a little bit. Let's take it to a graph. Here I have the weekly production rates from both Fremont and Shanghai, again, excluding known shutdowns. So we'll start with Fremont, which is the blue production line. You can see that throughout 2019, there was this pretty linear growth. Tesla went from 6,000 a week to 6,700 per week to 7,300, almost up to 8,000 per week. This is total Fremont output. And then Q1 and Q2, we saw those dips as Model Y was introduced. Tesla was dealing with the impacts of coronavirus, even if it wasn't fully shut down. Again, this excludes those fully shut down days. But then here for Q3, hopefully a return to normalcy. Obviously, Tesla has had time to ramp up Model Y production now. So I'm showing sort of a continuation of the previous linear growth that they had each quarter. And now I'm at 8,500 per week total S3XY from Fremont. So I walked through the bottoms up portion before, but looking tops down at just the total weekly production rate, to me, this feels pretty good compared to Tesla's historical progress. And then if we look at Shanghai, again, we have a little bit more confidence there, but excluding those last 10 days of the quarter, the production rate sort of leveled out around that 2,850 per week. I wanna quickly hop to Q4 production then while we're on production, and then I'll round back on my Q3 delivery forecast. We'll again, just start with everything here. So for Q4, I am projecting 180,300 vehicles produced in the quarter, 45,000 from Shanghai, 135,000 from Fremont. So let's start with Shanghai again. As I said earlier, Tasmanian is reporting that Tesla is adding that third shift. They have installed capacity of 200,000, they have said. So hopefully that third shift helps them bring the production rate closer to that 200,000 per year, 50,000 per quarter. But I do think it'll take Tesla a little bit of time to fully realize the production gain from that third shift. So I'm not projecting 50,000, but projecting somewhere around 45,000 for Q4. Flipping over to Fremont, 
We'll again start with Model Y. I'm projecting Model Y production to go from 33,000 in Q3 up to 55,000 in Q4. And the reason for this is basically the benchmark that we have from the Model 3 ramp. In 2018 Q2 to 2018 Q3, Tesla ramped up Model 3 production from being about 29,000 in Q2 all the way up to 53,000 Model 3s in Q3. So I'm projecting a relatively similar increase here from Tesla for Q3 to Q4 Model Y. It's possible that Model Y could even exceed that, but on the other hand, there's also less pressure for Tesla to ramp up Model Y production as aggressively. Remember, that was a really critical time period for Tesla back in 2018. They didn't have the time that being profitable affords you to have. With Tesla being in a bit more comfortable position now, they may not have to push quite as hard, and that might be better longer term, allowing them to focus a little bit more on ramping in a sustainably profitable way with better quality assurance, you know, whatever the case may be. Balancing those two out, I'm basically just projecting a similar increase for Model Y as we saw for Model 3. For SNX, I think Tesla will increase production in Q4 from the Q3 level. Q4 is always a great quarter for total automotive. I expect Tesla to have very few down days. I think they'll try to just push everything as hard as they can in Q4 and make it just a really, really demonstrative quarter of what Tesla can achieve. So I've got 17,000 SNX in here, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if that was higher. And then for Model 3, I think again to me this is the biggest unknown, so I'm sort of holding the status quo, the logic that I had for Q3 into Q4, just showing a slight increase from what I have projected for Q3 in terms of the weekly production rate up to about 4,800. That gets 63,000 vehicles for the quarter. Putting all those together is 135,000 from Fremont, adding that to the 45,000 from Shanghai. That gets me to just over 180,000 for Q4. So putting Q3 and Q4 together, that puts my full year at just under 510,000 vehicles produced for the year. Depending on how deliveries shake out, this would fall within Elon's comment at battery day slash shareholder meeting saying that they would grow deliveries this year by 30 to 40 percent. So let's talk about deliveries then for Q3. Again, production 144.6. We know Elon on Twitter had mentioned that this has been a tough quarter logistically. Because of that and a couple other reasons, I think Tesla will actually produce more vehicles this quarter than they deliver, but only by a little bit. I think Shanghai deliveries should outpace production because we have that final 10 days being shut down for production. So that allows Tesla to move through inventory without creating new inventory, drawing that inventory down. But I think Fremont will be the opposite case. Production should have continued to ramp throughout the quarter as Model Y production rates become higher and higher, which if that is persistent, means the final week of the quarter, that's gonna be your highest production week. And just logistically, you can't deliver all of those vehicles. And the final week for Q3 is certainly going to be a lot higher than the final week for Q2. So because of that, I expect inventory to build up a little bit. Tesla was also only at 17 days of supply for inventory, which is a little bit lower than they have been historically. Last year, Q3 ended with 18 days of supply, for example. And I won't bore you with the math, but that 17 number is actually a little bit overstated because the global days of inventory is calculated off of sales and sales were suppressed because of the coronavirus situation. Just Tesla couldn't get enough vehicles out there to sell. So that number is actually probably closer to 15 or 16 in reality. So I expect Tesla to bring that back up by a couple days. Therefore, I'm estimating that Tesla over produces to deliveries by probably a couple thousand vehicles. So if I have to say a delivery estimate, I'll say 142,600. But as I said yesterday, to me, the final number isn't really all that important other than just understanding the context behind a lot of this. For me, the biggest thing is going to be, okay, what is the Model 3 production rate? What is the Model Y production rate? What clues can we get on those things? And how does that translate into Q4 and next year to 2021? So that's what I'm interested in. For what it is worth, the fact set consensus estimate currently sits at 136,350 deliveries for the quarter. The Tesla company compiled estimate also sits very close to that level at 135,900. Either way, we'll find out soon. I think there's not a lot of certainty this quarter, so I'm really curious to get the numbers. That should happen probably tomorrow. As soon as those numbers come out, I hope to get an episode out really quickly. I'll probably just do a live stream so we can talk about the implications of the numbers as soon as possible. So keep an eye out for that. That's where being subscribed and signed up for notifications can be really helpful. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast as well. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, October 2nd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.